getting, you're achieving your dreams or whatever, um, I've just been amazed at the synchronicity that's really been occurring in my life, and I feel that my level of happiness has really increased. Not to say that I haven't had, uh, you know, a few bad days or a few, you know, squabbles here and there, but overall, I, I feel totally blessed in uh, radiance. What a thing to say, radiance. If you think of the word radiance, it's like raw, you know, the sun, um, you know, the seven rays in the spectrum. So raw food is colorful. And probably the biggest doctrine of signatures, the simplest thing uh, that I use almost all the time is the life force. Because if you were to plant a raw sunflower seed and water it, it has the life force to grow into an eight foot tall plant. You know, one of the most beautiful, majestic, fragrant plants. And if you were to plant a roasted tamari sunflower seed in the ground, you could water it every day for the rest of your life and nothing would happen. And to me, that really illustrates that it might look the same, it might cost the same, it might come from the same part of the country, but there's something missing. Because when you heat something, it kills something. And could our culture being depressed have something to do with eating food that's so limp and languid and um, really been fired and burnt and, and, and uh, you know, heated oils. I, I see a lot of clients and I've certainly worked with people who suffer from depression over the years and according to oriental medicine, I'm not throwing all of what I've learned out of the window, but according to oriental medicine, depression is a liver-centered condition. Um, the health of our liver and gallbladder governs the emotions anger, depression, and creativity. And creativity is a great thing to move stagnant emotions. But if you don't have that outlet, what happens is people get either angry or depressed. What are the worst things we do for our livers? Eat heated oils. Margarine and shortening are the worst. But if, you, if you've already done that and you're ready for the next level, see how much you can improve by just improving the quality of oils that you consume. So even though I have respect for all that's gone before, I truly feel that raw food is the future. Um, another great thing to consider is think of how much energy we could save. If we didn't have to have cooking fires all over the planet, if we you know, really didn't need to use our stoves, if we didn't need to fry things and bake things. you know, Again, each household is just a small portion of that, but it could be huge. And the raw food movement is definitely growing. There's five raw restaurants in New York City. There's a raw teen support group in New York City. Um, I'm so glad to hear you're opening a, a yeah. restaurant in Juice Bar in Netherlands. What's the name of it going to be? Um. It's called the Peak Experience. The Peak Experience, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's within a uh, health and fitness center called the Peak. Okay. And uh, Southern California has a number of them. And uh, even Anchorage, Alaska has a raw foods restaurant, Min Minneapolis. So the other thing is, won't I be cold in winter? That's the other thing that people always say. And yet the wild animals don't eat cooked food. And the animals that do eat cooked food need to go to the vet. So think about that, um, you know, and, and yet, you know, I mentioned the thing about the, the wild game as, as being a factor that perhaps they're eating uh, food that's not really natural to them. So won't I be cold in winter? I used to freeze in winter and now I'm warmer. And so much of uh, Chinese medicine is about um, helping to improve your blocked qi. Have you heard that term before? Qi is life force and you go and you get acupuncture needles stuck in you because you have blocked qi. Well, if you're eating raw food, the chi isn't blocked. It's moving right along. Your, your colon is moving, the blood is moving, your breath is moving. There's, the blockage is a lot less likely to be happening. I guess wearing a tight bra could block your chi too, so we can block our chi with clothing as well. So, that, you know, our, but, um, so I actually feel warmer, but for those of you who are concerned about how can I be warm enough in winter, um, I think winter time is a time to use a little bit more oils. Uh, it is a time when you maybe you want to eat more uh, grains like um, sprouted uh, crackers or sprouted buckwheat. I make like tabbouleh with sprouted uh, buckwheat, um, sprouted quinoa, sprouted black quinoa is also wonderful. It might be a time where you eat more dried fruit rather than just fresh tropical fruit, fruits that 
perhaps have been preserved from the summer harvest. And the color, uh, the colors red and orange are very warming. So this is also a good time to eat warming orange uh, hued foods like winter squash, pumpkin, uh, carrots, sweet potatoes, and they can all be eaten raw. I, I wouldn't have believed it a couple years ago, but sliced sweet potatoes can be used for a dip. You can make pumpkin pie, just peel the pumpkin and put it in the food processor with you know, raw almond butter and some dates, and you can make incredible pies. Um, even winter squash can be prepared the same way. And uh, you know, get a little bit of sunlight every day. Uh, go out, you know, it doesn't mean like you're gonna go sunbathe, but just 20 minutes of full spectrum light can be very warming. You can also warm yourself with spices. And uh, one of my teachers, Victoria Butenko, uh, said that she had an acupuncturist in, his, in her class, a Chinese acupuncturist, <clears throat> and he felt that the uh, saying that you have to eat your food warm was really a mistranslation and that it meant you needed to warm your food with spices, not warm it on the stove with cooking it. So some of my favorite spices to add warmth are cayenne, ginger, cardamom, uh, black pepper, I said cinnamon, cinnamon and ginger twice, they're so great. But um, a lot of our culinary herbs, even oregano and marjoram, garlic, horseradish, onions, all of those have a wonderful warming quality to them. So it's really not that hard to do. And I'm amazed that I'm actually warmer. And when people say, won't you be cold in the winter? You know, ask them if like, do you eat cooked food in the summer? Won't you be hot? And usually that, you know, kind of makes people realize like, don't, don't worry about that so much. So um, again, you know, with no disrespect to uh, the studies of uh, cultures that have really promoted cooking their food for so long, these cultures have not achieved perfect health. Um, the Chinese have very high rates of stomach cancer, so why do we want to eat just like them? Um, David Wolf says over and over again, why take health advice from someone who isn't healthy? Um, I had a nutrition teacher uh, not too long ago, uh, a you know, big overweight man who was always sweating, telling the students, like, you really need to eat meat. That um, it was, you know, in this climate, we should be eating more meat. So, um, you know, again, uh, look at who you're taking health advice from. Um, and again, we all have our struggles and people go through transitions. When I became raw, I certainly went through some uh, cleansing reactions where things got worse before they got better. That's certainly possible to happen, but rather than saying, oh, this means I'm supposed to go back to eating cooked food, I would see it as an opportunity to say, um, what is this trying to tell me? How can this be my ally? Maybe I need to you know, lighten up. Maybe I need to rest, drink more water. Um, do a sauna, go to the hot springs, uh, clean up my emotional garbage as well, and maybe even fast for a day. So this is another way I'm sort of alienating people because rather than selling people something, I'm saying, you know, one of the quickest, least expensive, and safest ways of getting well is to do a short fast, and it doesn't cost anything. Um, so, Again, you know, there's not a big markup on produce. Produce is probably the lowest markup item in a store. There's a lot more markup on everything else. So you're not going to see that much research being done on let's do a study and show that, you know, eating, an app, eating three apples a day can lower your cholesterol. I actually tell my clients that now. Yeah, you can take hawthorn berry tea and you can use garlic. You should eat less red meat, but eat three apples a day. That's a great way to lower your cholesterol. Um, so <laughs> most of the food is delicious. That's another great reason. I actually, for this group of 17 people yesterday, I actually tried out a lot of recipes on them for the first time that I'd never made before, and they still all were good. You know? And colorful and different textures. I mean, it didn't, it looked like a gourmet meal. If you hadn't told me it was raw, I never would have guessed. Thank you. You have a question? Yeah, I, I guess everything makes sense with the natural side of it and everything, and seeing people who live on this, it makes sense. I'm wondering if the mechanics involved, having to get you know, at least one, one piece of machinery getting um, 
like food vouchers? Is there, is there alternatives, or is it just more of a, just a labor-intensive uh, alternative? Um,